Dear students, in previous sessions, we discussed in detail about animal physiology, their various systems like digestion and absorption, breathing and respiration, body fluids including circulation. Also, we discussed about nervous system and chemical coordination including endocrine glands. In today's session, we intend to make you familiar with these structures and their placement in the human body that is in your own body. In digestion and absorption as we have studied and discussed that there is mouth, esophagus, stomach, different parts of stomach like cardiac and pyloric, then duodenum, small intestine, large intestine, rectum including anal canal and then the anus. We also discussed about glands associated with alimentary canal like pancreas and also liver. It is very important for us children to know their real placement in relation to each other also. Let us now see this in the model. So children we have reached near the model which is showing different parts of alimentary canal and by Discussing this particular model, we will be able to appreciate the way these organs are located in our body. We begin alimentary canal with mouth. You can see teeth and the tongue inside the mouth and you know the importance of teeth and tongue in eating. When we eat food, first we put it in the mouth. Teeth will help in mastication and tongue will help in rolling of the food. You can also see salivary glands which will secrete saliva and this saliva will be mixed with food and will help in digestion that means the process of digestion will begin right in the mouth from mouth the food will travel through this esophagus is a tube which is connecting mouth with the stomach no digestion will take place in esophagus it transports food and how does it transport? There is movement called peristaltic movement which goes at a particular pace to push food from this part to this part and finally to the stomach. For that reason, peristalsis goes on in every part of elementary canal. That is how food is moving in a forward direction in a particular pace with a particular speed. What is required? for it to be digested and absorbed. The muscle contraction in esophagus is important that pushes food down. If that was not there, if muscle contraction was not here in esophagus, then food will not move from mouth to the stomach and that will mean that digestion will not take place. So that movement becomes very important. Coming to stomach, this is stomach. This is cardiac part of the stomach and this is pyloric part of the stomach. That means stomach is connected to esophagus on one side and duodenum on the other side. Obviously there are continuation gaps and there should be some kind of sphincter. What kind of sphincter? Which will allow food to move from here to here but not from stomach to the esophagus. Children you should appreciate that stomach secretes enzymes plus hydrochloric acid to disinfect the food and wall of stomach is especially designed to resist acidity. Other parts of alimentary canal are not designed to resist HCL effect. That means once food reaches stomach it is mixed with HCl, hydrochloric acid. Now, if it moves back to esophagus, it is going to create problem because acid will also move and that acid will be injurious to the muscles of esophagus. Children, you must have experienced sometimes if you have eaten little more 
or you are eating very quickly, sometimes little food comes back to the mouth and that gives you acidic touch or acidic feeling. That is this acid which has come back from this point to that point. That is called reflux. It should not happen under normal circumstances, but sometimes you do experience this. Once the food reaches the stomach, churning takes place, mixing of enzyme, digestion begins and at this point, this is a pyloric sphincter and when food is pushed to the duodenum which is next part of elementary canal, then again you have a sphincter. After this, food is reaching the duodenum and it should not come back to the stomach. Duodenum from here till here. This is important for two reasons. One, the bile from liver is delivered here and pancreatic juice from pancreas is delivered here. This is liver and this is pancreas. Both the glands are associated with alimentary tract, both are important. Liver has gallbladder which is having bile and bile comes to duodenum, mixes with food and it helps in emulsification of fat, in other words digestion of fat. From pancreas, we have pancreatic juices which will digest various components of the food which we have eaten. There are two ducts which join together and make one common duct through which both are delivered to the duodenum. And that is the reason why this duodenum becomes important. And one more thing, children, you should see in this uh, model that pancreas is placed in the loop of duodenum. It is in fact membranous structure. It is shown very clearly here, but it is membranous structure which is lodged in the U, two limbs of U duodenum in the body. And then duodenum continues as a small intestine. And this is the small intestine, which is very long and hence it is coiled. The leftover digestion will take place in a small intestine by the juice secreted by a small intestine called succus entericus. After digestion is complete, absorption will also take place in the small intestine. And after that, food moves to large intestine. This is large intestine. In the large intestine, no further digestion will take place at the most. Absorption of excess water will take place. And if you go to toilet once in a day in the morning, then your system is fine. And if your fecal matter remains in the rectum for longer time, then what will be reabsorbed? Only water. Hence, it will lead to constipation. So, Having good toilet habits will also be good for you, otherwise you may have problem in this area of your elementary canal. The large intestine continues as rectum, anal canal and the anus through which you throw fecal matter out. Don't forget to see this appendix. You have heard about appendix. This is a vestigial organ in our body and it is at this point in the large intestine. It does not have much of a role in our body, but it only proves that our ancestors, grass eating ancestors had this appendix very big in size and also functional. So, in whole of elementary canal, there are various parts starting with mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, of course duodenum, large intestine, rectum, anal canal, and the anus, two glands, the liver and the pancreas and also you can see vestigial organ, non-functional which is here. So children, in this model, we have seen placement of various parts of elementary tract starting from mouth, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, anal canal and anus. 
We have also seen the placement of liver and the pancreas, their ducts leading to duodenum. We have seen teeth and tongue in the mouth and also the salivary glands which secrete saliva and salivary enzyme. We have seen relationship between the different parts of alimentary tract and with this we come to the end of discussion of this particular model.